Good morning, everybody. Welcome to MFC Group's Fast Tech Seminar Series hosted by EAS Sales and TMC. Thank you for joining us. Um, today, we're spotlighting USB-C charging solution with Diodes Incorporated. Our speaker for this seminar is David Hyman. David is an application engineer with over 20 years of industry experience. Everyone is muted, so please type any questions that you have into the meeting chat. And throughout the presentation, I will um, interrupt Dave with any of your questions, um, or you're welcome to hold them till the end if you prefer. And be sure to stick around to the end. We're going to have trivia, and the top three winners will actually win a prize, so that will be fun. And um, we are ready to go. So, David, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Amanda. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Appreciate your time, and uh, I look forward to uh, working with you in the future. So, at any rate, let me uh, just get rolling here. So, basically, why we're talking about um, diodes USB-C charging solutions today is if we take a look at the products that are being produced with uh, rechargeable batteries. So, I mean, you look, there's a plethora of, um, of different uh, types of products for different types of applications. Out there. You can see here, I mean, portable power tools, you know, hair clippers, uh, kids' toys, uh, you know, home appliances, things like that. And the one thing that all of these devices have in common is that the manufacturer has to include a some sort of a charger in the box with these devices. Okay, so that's you know that's additional cost, that's additional design time or sourcing time required to put that battery charger in the box. So what if it, there was um, a standard charger available so that all you really had to do would be to you know meet the charging standard your device and you could just ship it without a charger. So that's kind of what this uh, USB-C um, power delivery uh, solution has provided a lot of manufacturers, um, basically the opportunity to do that. So just taking a quick look at the USB standard. I mean, the USB was actually introduced in 1996, which was 27 years ago. And, uh, you know, since 1996, when it was a uh, you know, a 1.5 megabit per second interface. Um, it has evolved into what it is today. I mean, you know, today we see a lot of USB uh, 2 and 3 still deployed. We're starting to see USB 4 come out. So we have data rates going up into the hundreds of gigabits per second. And now with USB-C power delivery, we have the opportunity to power um, a lot of different types of devices and charge a lot of different types of devices with, with that, uh, that added flexibility. Um, so as we, you know, we took a look at the, the evolution of the, of the USB data standard, um, you know, the, the USB connector standard has evolved along with the, the data standard. You can see there was a lot of different types of, of connectors, you know, some of them pretty funky when we started getting into these, these super speed, you know, and high speed type connectors. And uh, today we have this uh, this nice, um, simple, uh, easy to use reversible connector for USB-C. So we take a closer look at the the USB-C connector. Um, oh, it's basically it's a 24 pin connector. It's reversible. Um, some of the unique things about the USB-C connector that we see immediately is is power and ground, right? So we actually have four. V bus pins, and we have four ground pins in the USB-C connector, along with the you know the high-speed uh, TX and RX lines. We have the the uh, the legacy USB two lines, and then we have these two lines, these uh, configuration channels, um, which is unique to USB-C, and we'll talk about their function here in a minute. And then we have these sidebands that are actually used for 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 different modes for the USB-C connector. And that has to do with um, with alt mode for um, uh, like uh, video delivery and things like that. So let's take a look at the USB power delivery standard as it exists today. So you know, basically it's split up into two power ranges. We have uh, the standard power range or SPR, and then we have extended power range. So standard power range is currently supporting voltages up to 
to 20 volts. So you can see here, so the basic voltage is 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts. Then you can see the output currents that are supported here um, are uh, you know, anywhere from 0.1 to 3 amps, the 5 volt level, 3 amps at the 9 volt level, next one 3 amps at the 15 volt level, and then we get to the 20 volt level and we start seeing this, this 5 amp. So you can see standard power range can deliver up to 100 watts of power, which again, now that, that's basically giving you flexibility to power larger devices and charge larger battery packs. Then when we get to extended power range, um, we're talking about voltages uh, 28 volts, 36 volts, and 48 volts. And, and we're talking about, um, you know, um, it maxes out at five amps uh, because that's basically the limitation of the cable, even with those, those four power lines and ground lines. But even at five amps and 48 volts, we're able to deliver up to uh, 240 watts of power with USB power delivery, and that's going to be Rev 3.1. All right, so, so now that we have this, this standard voltage range and these standard current ranges, um, there's been some additions to the spec that um, allow for what we call the programmable power supply protocol. So pro programmable power supply protocol allows um, granular control over VBUS power. Um, you can actually request voltages anywhere between 3.3 and 21 volts and 20 millivolt steps. And that's for, for programmable power supply, which is applicable to the standard power range, okay? Then we look at extended power range, and there's a different protocol, which is called a vo adjustable voltage supply. So not quite as granular as the um, PPS for SPR, but it still allows uh, adjustment between 15 to 48 volts and 100 millivolt steps. So think about what this means, okay? So when you're trying to, to, to profile a, a battery charge uh, in your product, you have to put a power supply in there that allows you to adjust your voltage and your current limit to your battery pack locally, right? So you have to you know, design that power supply and be able to control it locally. So having this protocol available, uh, this programmable power supply or the adjustable voltage supply protocols available to you, you don't really need that power supply locally anymore. So now you can basically just through the USB-C um, connector and, and, and through the, uh, the CC lines request any voltage you need for whatever step in your, your battery charge profile you, you, you're at. Okay, so, so that basically takes a lot of onus off you as far as what you have to put into your end product to charge your battery or even just to power your device, okay? So that's kind of a couple of the cool things about USB power delivery that, um, that, that provide a lot of flexibility and, and, and basically gives you the ability to move stuff out of your end system. Okay, so now let's take a look at, at, at some of the, the definitions of USB-C charging, right? So we, we have basically three types of ports. We have the, the downstream facing port, which is basically your battery charger. Okay, so this is the this is the device that's actually delivering power. So this is the, uh, again, the downstream facing port. Then you have the, the upstream facing port, which is the device that's receiving power or that we call it the sync device. And then we have a dual roll port. So dual roll ports are, are pretty interesting because now through your the same uh, USB-C connector, you can basically receive power. So this is you know base a power dock, right? So it's got a, a battery pack inside of it. So so it can receive power through a USB-C port. And then when you turn around and have something that you'd like to charge with this thing, the same port will turn around and turn into a power delivery port. And be able to charge devices. Okay, so we're seeing uh, some interesting uh, applications crop up for this dual roll port here, um, even in this market. So, all right. So remember, downstream facing port, upstream facing port, and dual roll port. Okay. So, so let's start talking about some of the specific diodes components that we have. All right. So, so we're going to talk mostly today about the sync side or or the the device that's requesting power side. Um, the source side, these battery chargers, there's there's not a, a huge amount of demand for them. 
in the States at this point. Most of these are coming out of Asia. But Diodes does have these source controllers. We have a, a number of different products for either for something like this, which is an offline charger. We also have um, some devices for automotive applications where we're you're basically um, you're running off of a 12 volt or 24 volt DC system. We have the, the controllers for that. And we're in development of the buck boost controllers for that as well. But let's let's take a look at, at the sync side. So our, our, our most simple um, sync controller um, is our AP33771. Okay, so this device is considered a standalone device. So this device using um, three resistors, basically, and, um, and then uh, another pin, basically, for power delivery. So using uh, several resistors and pin straps to program this device to request a fixed voltage and current, or, you know, with simple switching or, or or you know, a comparator or something like that, you can switch between a couple of different uh, voltages and currents that you're requesting. Okay, so these again are designed to be standalone, um, and I'll get to, you know in a second, you know what the the whole system looks like. But um, with no MCU, uh, you can put one of these into these devices. It's a very simple implement, and you can request a, a fixed voltage and current to charge your your batteries or power your device. Then we move to our AP3372, 33772, I'm sorry. Um, and this device basically is a little bit more sophisticated. It the functionality is basically the same when it comes to how it controls VBUS, I think, but, but it has uh, an I2C interface on it. So that allows you to have a local microcontroller that basically talks to it and tells it what you want to request from the power delivery device, okay? so. When you're looking at your systems here, you can see here. So we have the the three three seven seven two here connected to an MCU. The the three three seven seven two or the three three seven seven one do not sit directly in the power pad. <clears throat> Basically, the devices have a, a a gate driver on board, and you would have a an end channel MOSFET sitting here that's that's sitting in your power pad. So what happens when you actually connect your device to the the power delivery or the charger? Um, the AP3371 or AP3372 will go out over the CC lines and handshake with the power delivery device. And then, you know, based upon what the device is programmed to do via either resistors or via the MCU, it's going to request whatever voltage and current or voltage and power level that, that, that you need for your device. It's going to negotiate that. And you can see here there's a uh, uh, another line here that's sitting in front of the MOSFET that's you know directly on VBUS. This is a sun sign, so it's going to request the, the 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 voltage and power you want. It's going to uh, sense then that 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 specific voltage is being delivered to this side, you know, to the uh, the, the source side of of the MOSFET. Once it's determined that's all there, then basically it's going to turn this. MOSFET on basically and connect the bus to your system. Okay, so that's what both of these devices are designed to do. One again, resistor program, one basically MCU program. So for both of these devices, we have eval boards available. See here the 33771 and AP33772. So both of these eval boards are available. You can request these. Um, you talk to your EAS or TMC field salesperson, um, they can basically reach out to me or you know anybody at Diodes and, and we can arrange to get you an eval board and you know whatever application help you need to 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 start implementing your design. Um, so basically the the AP three three seven seven one eval board. This is a standalone device. So basically you'll get a table here about how to set up your resistor programming for the the voltage levels. And that you know the power levels that you're looking for. Um, again, these are are available through distribution. Um, they're stocked, you know, DigiKey and Mauser. And uh, again, very simple implement. These are pretty much standalone, so you're really not going to need a lot of any anything else other than these specific eval boards for the AP33771. For the AP33772, because this is a device that's programmable, you need a way to 
So basically, um, talk to the I squared C on the AP33772 to evaluate it and to you know set it up to request whatever voltage and current you want. So so the eval boards are available. We also support um, Raspberry Pi or Arduino. We actually have firmware already built for these that you can actually go online and download. So so you know whatever your preference would be for Raspberry Pi. Arduino, we, we, we do have those uh, software apps available, those, those, those firmware builds, I should say, available for download. And then again, the, the eval boards are available, DigiKey and Mauser, or you re could request them through your, your TMC or EAS uh, uh, field sales rep, and we can get those into your hands uh, basically immediately. So, so those are the, that's the, the, you know, the basic function of these parts. This is, you know, and the Evo boards that are available, you know, we can provide, you know, whatever application support you need to get these up and running. So now we just take a look at, at, at the, the products that we're delivering today, all right? So we have the AP33771, we have the AP33772. These were our Gen 1 devices. Um, you can see here that, that they handle uh, power delivery 3.1 SPR up to, um, I believe, 20 volts for both of these. We have the AP33771C and the AP33772S. Um, both of these parts are actually sampling and available now. So 33771C, basically we extended to the EPR 28 volt level on this one. The other thing that's important is legacy um, type A charging support. I'm sorry, this should be saying none here. So that's that's my fault for not correcting the slide. But uh, at any rate, so the, the Gen 1 devices did not support uh, legacy USB-A type connectors. So when you plug a, like a USB-A to USB-C cable in, um, if the 337, the, the Gen 1 33771 or 33772 did not um, sense that CC line or get an acknowledgement or a handshake, basically it would not connect VBUS. So when we went to the second generation, the AP3371C and the or the AP33772S, we added that capability. So if you plug into a, a legacy USB-A connector, it will connect VBUS at a default level, uh, which you know obviously is five volts. But um, but there are some some other things here that that enhancements that have been made on the 33771C. Um, you can see we didn't do a lot of it, but on the 33772S, we added some of the uh, GPIO mapping, source identity. Um, uh, and then on the AP53781 and AP53782, these are a dual roll port controllers. These parts are going to be um, sampling. Uh, they're sampling now, basically, and they're going to be available um, uh, for mass production uh, sometime in probably toward the end of Q1 of 2024. But these are the dual role port controllers. And I was saying that we had some some interesting applications for these. We've already been contacted by um, an e-bike uh, manufacturer who is interested in using this device not only to charge the onboard battery of the e-bike, but they also want that port to be reversible so the rider can actually plug in you know his mobile phone or you know whatever device he's he wants to have while he's riding and be able to power it as well power and charge it so so we're seeing some cool applications for this we've also had uh, some medical devices uh for the the dual roll port controller as well so um these are are you know again the same functionality as the chargers except they add the capability to turn around and deliver power as well Okay, so just a couple of other, let me just see what I'm doing. I guess I'm coming to the end of my time, but just one quick thing. Uh, one of the other interesting applications that we do support is what we call C-Link. Um, C-Link basically takes advantage of the alt mode for video delivery. Um, you see a lot in your, your laptops now, you have USB-C receptacles. So the USB-C receptacles in laptops, um, you know, obviously you can charge your laptop through them, but you can turn around and plug in something like a portable monitor. And then you, not only can you deliver power to the portable monitor through USB power delivery, but you can also deliver video. And I just want you to see that diodes does support this with 
the controllers themselves, plus we handle the uh, the switching and redrivers and uh, some I squared C uh, IO expansion if necessary to control things. But but we support you know a, a lot of this functionality with with uh, products that we're already shipping. So it's one. And then if we just take a look here at um, we have uh, for the automotive applications we have uh, dual channel. Um, these are the the charger the power delivery controllers. Um, we have reference designs for a 140 watt dual port. Now we're working on um, uh, higher power um, power delivery controllers for automotive applications. The automakers are looking at this big time, and they're going to be putting this into um, vehicles here very shortly. Probably starting model year 2027 ish, you'll start to see these uh, uh, you know these modules proliferate in in cars as well. So uh, that is basically the end of my time. So um, I. And I appreciate your attention today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to pipe up now. Um, otherwise, I'm going to turn it back to Amanda. Thanks, Dave. Very good presentation.